Good morning and welcome to our conversation starter. Thank you for joining us. We know that there's a lot going on in our country right now <clears throat> and our thoughts are with everyone that has been affected. So we certainly appreciate the fact that you've chosen to spend your time with us this morning. I'm Carl Burgess. I'm a portfolio manager at Nedbank Private Wealth and together with Wesley Bester, who heads up the derivatives trading desk, we will be your host during this morning's session. While we're connecting with you online in this way, it's important to reflect on connectivity and connections in general, but especially when it comes to our money and financial matters. At Nedbank Private Wealth and Nedbank Financial Planning, we use our globally integrated and advice-led approach to connect your financial decisions to your goals and aspirations. The reality is that every single financial decision that we make affects not only our ability to protect what's important to us, but also to achieve our goals and dreams. At Nedbank Private Wealth and Nedbank Financial Planning, we make these connections more visible and therefore more manageable. But what does this mean for you as a client? It means that we connect you to technical expertise, a global perspective, appropriate opportunities, and access to solutions and services from across Nedbank and other top providers. But most importantly, we connect you to the personal and objective advice you need to make your money decisions count. And practically, this is what we mean when we refer to connected wealth. As the title of today's webinar suggests, our guest speakers, Wesley Bester and Nolan McNamara, will be guiding us through how trends and technical analysis inform our trading ideas. Wesley has been with the business for the, last, for the past eight, 11 years and has headed up the derivatives trading desk for the last six years. He has extensive experience on the market, not only in terms of trading various financial instruments, but the structuring of transactions as well. Joining Wesley is Nolan McNamara, who has been with Nedbank for the past seven years on the derivatives trading desk and has a keen eye when it comes to technical analysis. You would have noticed that we've been sending out regular trading ideas. These are short term in nature, and the objective is to take advantage of short term moves in the market. And today's session will largely be aligned with these trading ideas and some of the work that goes into generating these ideas at Nedbank Private Wealth. I would like to note that these trading ideas are very different to our long term investment process, which underpins the way we invest our clients discretionary funds. Our investment philosophy is simple. Long term investing well considered. What this means is that we aim to invest with a three to five year time horizon. <coughs> this generally strips out short term dislocations that one often experiences in markets. Part of long term investing is that we are patient investors. To lose patience is to lose the battle. Well considered implies that we adopt a principled approach in how we manage and look after your money. This speaks to the price that we pay for securities, cost management in the portfolio and a simple rule of capital protection. It's also important to note that we perform in-house proprietary fundamental research on all our holdings in our client portfolios. Utilizing this approach, we can offer our clients what they expect from us, superior long term inflation beating returns. You may already be receiving our heads up notes and these notes speak to our long term well considered approach. Wesley, a very warm welcome to both you and Nolan, and we are certainly very eager to hear what you have to say. But before I hand over to you, if I could quickly run through some important housekeeping notes. Please could I ask you to use the Q&A chat box on your left hand side to submit any questions you may have during the webinar. Uh, if your screen happens to freeze during the webinar, press the refresh button and it will take you right back to where you last stopped in the webinar. You will receive an email in the next few days with a link to a recording of the webinar. Hopefully you'd like to share this with friends and family or perhaps watch it again. Please remember you can get more thought leadership insights, the recordings of previous webinars and find out about future webinars on our website. Lastly, your views certainly matter to us. Please help us improve our future webinars by giving us your feedback in a brief survey that you'll receive after today's session. That being said, Wesley, over to you. Thanks, Kyle. Um, thanks for that great introduction. I think you overdid it a little, um, but you're looking very snazzy this morning, if I may add. It's a little bit different to our usual tracksuit catch-ups. I'm Wesley. I run the Derivatives Trading Desk, and I'll be running you through our agenda and cover some topics as well as throwing in some pools of wisdom while Nolan's presenting just to throw him off course a little bit. But our our main goal for today is just to, you know, it's just to spark some interest in what we do, technical analysis, just build a base for you on, on technical analysis, as well as getting into the real interesting things on how we generate these short-term trading ideas. So, I mean, just going through our agenda, 
Um, Nolan's going to run us through the technical analysis side of things. Just the very basics. We want to run you through how we start our trading day. I mean, just to give you a guide, you know, just where we start, what we focus on. Um, we want to get you started on your technical analysis journey. I think it's a great, you know, it's a great journey to go on, you know, especially if you are an active trader. Um, we just want to get you started there. And then, you know, we want to run through our, our ideas, how we generate them. And we want to hold your hand. We want to walk you through an idea. We want you to feel comfortable when you do receive these ideas and that you can, you know, act on them. I think it's, it's very important that we do run you through them. Um, I'll take you through our performance, which is which has actually been quite, which has actually been quite, um, quite impressive, if I say so myself. And, you know, and then I want you to, I want to run through our, how we, how we distribute these ideas. Um, you know, I think that's where we maybe need some some audience um, engagement. You know, we we currently sending them out via email and we're adding them onto our website. You know, emails might be a little bit old school, so maybe you've got some better ideas for us. And that's where we need, you know, we need some ideas from you. Again, submit them in the chat box. We we open to ideas, and I think I mean that's how how this business grows is is from from looking at new ways of doing things. Um, I want to run you through our research center, which I think is a great tool that you know I don't think too many people are using it. So you know I'll run you through our research centers on the website where we are saving um, our trade ideas, and we're also publishing you know Carl's long term, well considered fundamental research on that in that same in that same breath on the on the research center. So I'll run you through both of those. Um, we want to take you through these um, our market tools and our dashboard just to just to help you start your trading day. You know, as I as as we'll walk you through our trading day, I want I want you set up for your trading day and how and how you can t you know take advantage of of our of our website. Um, I'll just quickly run you through our upcoming um, attractions, which are you know some educational videos. And then I think for the interesting part, we'll 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 jump back to Kyle, where he'll take us through the Q and A session. But I think um, you know, Knowles, I think you're ready for this. Why don't you run everyone through the the technical analysis side of things? Um, Knowles, over to you. Morning, morning. Thank you very much, Kyle and Wesley. Uh, good morning to everybody. A uh, warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so as Wes said, I'm going to take cover a few points on technical analysis. Um, a couple of our trade ideas, some differences between technicals and fundamentals, etc. Uh, yeah, obviously we don't have too much time, so I think let's jump straight into it here. Um, so why use technical analysis and basically technical analysis is, is known as a tool used to forecast the direction of price movements um, through the study of past market data like pricing and, and volume etc. Um, it is based on the belief that past market trends can aid us in, in predicting the potential future behavior of markets in general or stock specific. Um, it will help you to identify different trading opportunities um, by analyzing the statistical trends uh, gathered from, from trading activity and also allows us to gain a bit of insight into the supply and demand for securities as well as where these supply and demand points are concentrated. Um, technical analysis will also aid you with your timing of the market. So that speaks to your, your entry timing, your exit timing, which is your profits uh, targets as well as your stop loss levels. And it's also going to aid you or it's going to provide an additional layer of analysis over and above the fundamental analysis that should be forming the basis of your trading and investment decisions. So one point to note is that obviously it's not going to result in absolute price predictions. Um, it, it should merely help investors and traders anticipate what is likely to happen to markets or specific stocks um, over the future periods. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, have a quick look here at technicals versus fundamentals. So from a technical perspective, it's very much trend focused. It's focusing on the on the very short term side of the markets where fundamental analysis you, you're looking towards or you're trying to evaluate a security's intrinsic value by looking at the economic and financial factors which may impact a company over the medium to long term. So a fundamental analyst will, will try to evaluate that intrinsic value by discounting the value of future projected cash flows back to the net present value or NPV. A stock that is trading below this NPV is deemed to be a good, good investment and obviously vice versa. 
Um, from a technical perspective, from a technical analyst perspective, we are of the belief that all the fundamental information, all the information that is already public, is already priced into the into the the shares price. Um, so what we would rather concentrate on is the is the trends within a stock chart to try and then project uh, the possible future share price movements. We would always you know, be suggesting to make use of both techniques. That's both technical and fundamental analysis. Um, for example, from a fundamental perspective, that will help guide you into the what to buy or sell. And from a technical perspective, we would then be looking at the when or where to buy and sell. I'm going to hand over to Wes quickly, um, just to, to give us a quick look at our our Thanks. start of day process. Thanks, Lars. I think, I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. I think, I mean, just what I took out of that is, you know, the timing aspect is really important on, on the technical side. I mean, and that's what that what that's what we're using every day. Um, you know, just looking at, I think it's important to to um, to just show you how we start our, our trading day on the trading desk. Um, you know, just what indicators we watch. You know, we're definitely watching the international markets with, you know, specific focus on, on what the US has done overnight. What the what what Asia is doing in the morning, you know, this is just before we start our day. What our what the U.S. futures are doing, you know, we have a look at the currencies. I mean, that does play a major role. Commodities, especially in South Africa, we are quite resource focused, and um, we keep an eye on local and international news as well as upcoming earnings. Um, just you know, from a trader's perspective, you know, what what are we watching every day? You know, what alerts do we have? You know, this is just a basic layout of of what I look at. Um, you know, I've, I've got our, a breakdown of our indices, you know, locally, you know, what they've done. I actually set this up on, um, well, I, I set this presentation up on Friday night. So this is Friday's closing price. And you can see, uh, you know, we've got our indices, the the J, J210 took a bit of a hammering on Friday, um, followed suit on, on Monday, also getting sold off quite a bit. You know, so we'll have a basic idea of what, what, our, what our indices have done. Um, you know, we'll keep an eye on the U.S. markets, which I said, which is very important. I mean, we we definitely not uh, trendsetters in South Africa, so we do follow on, you know, from what the rest of the world's doing. So we'll keep an eye on the U.S. as well as the U.S. futures in the morning. I mean, that's a great indicator of, of you know, news that's happened overnight. You know, let's say when the U.S. is closed or what's happening in Asia in the morning and those U.S. futures do follow suit and, and it's a good indicator of what's to come. I like to keep an eye on the, the DXY. Which is which is an indicator of dollar strength, um, you know, good good to follow. I mean, especially if you if you are quite if you're following, you know, our rand as well. Um, you know, as as I said, I do keep a close eye on the currencies of what they what they've done, and then as well as our precious metals. You know, I mean, that's I mean, as I said, you know, South Africa is quite resource heavy in our in our in our indices. So you know, we we have to keep an eye on these. Um, affects a lot of our stocks. So I mean, I think you see Brent here at seventy three dollars. I mean, that's since then, since Friday, we've had massive sell-offs um, in that brand price. And just the center chart that I do keep an eye on is our is our all share top um, top 40 index. It's a futures index. So this starts trading at about 8.30 in the morning. And this is a great precursor to how our actual top 40 is going to open up in the morning. So this starts trading at 8.30. And generally, you know, if if our if our Aussie top 40 future is down 1% or 1.5% as it was on Monday morning, you know, that's generally where our top 40 is going to open. I um, mean, you know, it's going to open down one and a half percent at nine o'clock when the equity markets open. Um, you know, it's just um, that's just as how we start our day. You know, Knowles, why don't you chat to us around how how a, how a, one of the attendees or the audience can can start their technical day? You know, just give us a few basic indicators that you watch and where you would start. Thanks, Knowles. Over to you. Sure. Thank you, Wes. Okay, so basically, I mean, obviously, technical analysis is quite a wide and diverse topic. Um, from from my perspective, for a a good starting point for anybody, would be to obviously build a simplistic set of indicators that's going to meet your personal needs and your personal preferences. It's going to suit your trading and investment style. Um, my suggestions to to begin with would be looking at maybe the MACD, which is your moving average convergence divergence, your RSI or your relative strength index, the stochastic oscillator, the volume indicator, as well as Bollinger Bands. Um, those five indicators alone are 
very, very simple to use and understand, uh, very clear signals. They are widely available and, and used by most traders around the world. Um, what's nice about that is that obviously, you know, if there's a lot of people out there watching the same indicator, waiting for the same signal, when that signal presents itself, there's actually quite, there, there's a heightened likelihood of that, of that signal playing out. Um, I would also suggest having a look at different charting patterns, have a look at uh, moving averages and, and, and candlesticks. Now, there are hundreds of, of different indicators available. There are thousands of different candlesticks available. We're never going to know them all and identify them all on a daily basis. So just starting off somewhere, start off slowly, find the, the more well-known setups, signal producing indicators and, and you know, candlesticks, etc., and and start to to build that toolkit. As I said, um, these will help you identify the the concentration of of buying and selling points at a glance, the support levels, resistance levels, etc. So you'll be able to run through a watch list of uh, multiple stocks in a matter of minutes, thin that out into the 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 you know, the tradable options and then, then, you know, go through those again to find the best options out of, of, of that list that, that you've, that you've run through. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, as you mentioning, I think it is, it is quite personal. And I mean, the, you know, as, as, you know, as a technical chartist, I mean, you've got to find what works for you, you know, I mean, that's the important thing and, and everything is customizable, you know, I mean, let's, I mean, let's have a look at a chart. I mean, let's point these out on, on a chart, um, for the audience and just you know just i mean let, let's point these out for them um what do we you know how does it look when it comes together you know once you <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> once you've used your you know once you put your bollinger bands in place and your moving averages what is you know what does it look like i mean i've pulled up a chart here for you can you walk us through this Perfect. Absolutely. Um, so this is basically a weekly chart of naspers taken as of friday's close last week um on the top top graph there what we have is obviously the candlesticks those candlesticks are going to be giving you four pieces of information on a weekly basis so each candlestick will represent one week's worth of data it's going to be representing the high of the day the close of the day um, the open and the low uh, with that we've also got the bollinger bands there that is the blue lines above and below those candlesticks and the pink line in the center is going to be the moving average of the bollinger bands which is basically your mean or the midpoints of the trading range of that stock at that period um, i've also got some moving averages there which is the 200 day the 100 day the 50 day you don't have to use those those are just the more general ones some people like to use a 20 day etc which is basically a four week type of moving average etc um, so that that's that top channel there. The second uh, sub graph there is the stochastic oscillator. It's a very easy uh, indicator to read. There's two dark lines there. The upper line is representing a, a figure of 70, which is considered overbought when the indicator moves above that line. And the bottom line there is a, a level of 30. When the indicator moves below that line, it is considered oversold. You can clearly see that that line is under that, that level of 30 and has been for some time. So it's been remaining in oversold territory. Um, the signal off of this is when your signal line crosses down through your other line from an overboard territory, moving lower, that's gonna be a sell signal. And the opposite is true as what we're expecting now is that we're sitting in oversold territory. Our signal line is crossing up through our other line and that's gonna be giving us a buy signal um, from, from a weekly perspective on the graph. The second uh, indicator shown there is the RSI or relative strength index very very similar to the stochastic oscillator again levels of 70 and 30 are your overbought and oversold only difference here is that you don't have that crossover with the signal line but when the indicator reaches oversold territory you should then obviously start looking at other indicators or other patterns to to try identify that obviously we are in oversold territory we can now we should be expecting a bit of a reversion and a bit of an uptick in in that share price so that will be a bit of a leading indicator then to move on to your other indicators uh, to then obviously start trying to identify those long side entry points the last indicator i have on there is the macd the moving average convergence divergence and that indicator speaks to itself that's two moving averages that are either going to be converging together that means that the the pace of the buying or selling is slowing or they're going to be diverging away from each other which means that the pace of that buying or selling is picking up again 
when it when it extends to the downside that's moving into oversold territory and when your signal line crosses through your other line that's going to be presenting your buy signal and obviously the inverse is true from an overbought perspective we also have the MAC D zero line. Uh, that, that's something that I personally like to watch because that often often forms a point of support or resistance. And you'll notice that NAS was actually held onto that zero line support from March um, 2020. It only really broke it in April 2021. So it was using that as support multiple times over the period. So at a quick glance here, um, from the bottom, we've got the moving average convergence diversions crossing up, giving a bar signal. We've got the RSI getting very, very close to an oversold territory, looking to move higher. Stochastic oscillator oversold, crossing up, giving a bar signal. Uh, we've tested the lower Bollinger Band on the chart and we've held that. And in terms of the candle, we've got a bullish engulfing green candle. Right there at a quick snapshot, there's five different points that we have identified with those very simplistic indicators to say, that there's quite a likelihood or quite a good chance of NASPA starting to find a bit of a base here over the medium term using a weekly chart. Thanks for that, Professor Knowles. Um, I think uh, you know you've given us some great guidance there. Um, I think you know let's let's start uh, moving on to the in the more interesting stuff. Not that your that not that technical analysis wasn't interesting, but you know let's have a look at um, just wh why don't you chat us through our trade ideas and you know how we generate these and I mean I'll, I'll pop in and, and and mention a few things as well I mean why don't you kick us off here sure okay so on the Nedbank private wealth derivatives trading desk I mean we we do run through quite a rigorous process when generating and releasing trade ideas we want to make sure that our ideas that we are releasing are quality ideas that we have a really high conviction on that that our expectations are actually going to pan out um, so we do hold weekly meetings I mean these can be anywhere from daily um, through to twice three times a, a week um, that's that just depends on on uh, obviously, what type of data flow we are expecting, uh, how many trader opportunities we've identified. Um, and yeah, so through those meetings, once once we have, have uh, agreed on a specific stock, um, we would then sit down and actually formulate the trade. So we would then ascertain where are we looking to to buy the stock or sell the stock if we're shorting, Where's, what's our profit targets, what's our stop loss levels, and what type of time frame within which are we happy to, to be holding on to this trade. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, we have been, we, we are doing the heavy lifting for our clients. You know, we are structuring these trades from A to Z, trying to make it as simple um, and easy to use and follow as possible. So let's, let's have a look at a, at, at a trade. Yeah, no, I mean, let's, I mean, let's, let's, let's walk a client through, you know, they'll receive these, you know, via email or via the, the website, you know, whether if they click on it, you know, they'll, it, it consists of, you know, three pages. Why don't you run us through these, you know, just talk us through them. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, a, a client will receive these, these emails and they just get this graph and they get, you know, a little bit shell shocked if, if they're not used to technical analysis, but, you know, just, just bring it down to us and, and walk us through these, please. Absolutely. OK, so what, what we're looking at here is a trade idea on Sabanya Stillwater that we had released on the 26th of May this year. Um, this is the front page of our trade idea. And what you're always going to see on the front page of our trade idea is our graph with a few of the technicals that we have identified, which is basically justifying our decision for the direction of the trade. Um, you'll notice on the right hand side there we have mentioned our profit target, entry range, stop loss levels, and then the small green block there, the time frame within which we are looking to to take profits or exit the trade if it has not reached our profit by that time. Um, we've also got a linear regression channel on this trade specifically showing that we're on the bottom end of this channel and should be finding support around these areas. The Bollinger Band is also shown there testing the bottom and we were expecting this to hold. In the bottom quadrant there, we do have the RSI showing that it's an oversold territory, slowing a bit and potentially looking to start moving higher from these levels. And that was a basic, a basic look at some of the technicals behind this idea. We do also have a small trade analysis there at the bottom just to give you some background information on the company and their operations. You know, Knowles, I mean, let's have a look at uh, page two. I mean, I like this page. It's quite a neat, um, you know, strategy that that the clients can follow, you know, from day one when they receive it. Um, you know, do you want to chat us through, through, you know, just, just our, how we've set this layout out 
um, you know, maybe specifically focus on, you know, risk to reward. And I think the time stop is quite nice to to talk about because, you know, you don't want to be stuck in um, stuck in a in a trade for too long. I mean, these these ideas are short term in nature, and that's what we want to follow. We we want to present you know we we consistent with our ideas. We want to present you with new opportunities all all the time. So you know, time exit is good, and you know, we've, we 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 like how we position that. Why don't you run us through the different um, the different blocks, you know, let's say in, in this in this strategy layout. Sure thing. So so as as Wes mentioned there, this is going to be what our second page of the trade ideas is looking like. Um, this is basically where we've put the entire strategy in writing, what our entry ranges are, what the prices are that we are looking to buy or sell at, where our profit target is and what percentage this is from our entry range, uh, the stop loss level, how much we're looking to risk, the time exit, as, as Wesley said, I mean, generally our trade ideas are anywhere between three to four weeks time horizon. Um, they can work out sooner than that and if needed we can adjust that time horizon slightly further if if it really is getting close to our profit target we think that there's a good chance of us of us pushing a little bit further from here um, so the risk to reward ratio on this on this trade was 2.3 as to one, meaning we are risking one rand to make two rand thirty. You never, or you always want your trade ideas to be uh, two as to one or greater. Anything less than that is not really going to be that that worth it after taking into account transaction costs, etc. So you want to try keep that risk to reward ratio in check. And then obviously we've also mentioned the earnings expected on the 26th of August here from Sabanya Stillwater, which was after our assumed time of exit um, so so that there, there was no risk of of you know reporting or any reporting risk on this trade Nolz, this was actually quite a nice trade. It was one of our first, I think it was our second or our third idea we released. Um, but, you know, sometimes the market just plays ball with you. You know, um, we had released Sabanya. We bought it around 60 bucks. Um, about two days after releasing, Sabanya actually announced a share buyback program. And, I mean, I think it with, within about three or four days, um, we had we had reached our profit target of 68, 68 rand. So, you know, you know, for the clients that did follow us, I mean, it was a quick 10% gain um, on that trade. So, I mean, that was quite well done. And like I said, you know, the market does play ball with you sometimes. <laughs> it's not always, uh, you know, Murphy's Law against you. you know, the market does play ball sometimes. And just coincidentally, you know, Sabanya had announced a share buyback program and yeah, shot up to 68 quite quickly and we took profit on that trade. Nels, do you want to walk us through the, the technical motivation behind these trades? I think this is a nice, nice, um, nice page for, for clients that are looking for additional education, you know, just to just to catch up on some of their technical knowledge. Um, do you want to walk us through this page as well? Sure. So basically, this is going to be our third and last page of, of our trade ideas. All of our trade ideas will have this trade motivation page where we actually running through the technicals that, that we have identified our reasoning for the trade. We spell it out a little bit so in, in writing for you just, just for ease of understanding. Um, what's quite nice about this trade, what I really like is at the bottom there in that snippet, we are always going to give a bit of a, a guidance on a certain technical indicator or a technical topic. In this in this trade idea, we've made use of cycles, and it's quite it, it's something that, that that's quite nice to, to you know just just add to your toolkit um, and and use moving forward. Uh, there's always going to be one in the bottom end of our of our trade ideas, and you know these will be different every time. And you, you can obviously, like I said, just add that into the kit, keep it in the bank there, and you know you can start then trying to identify you know which part of the cycle we are in, and and just start practicing with that. Um, yeah, it's 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 quite a nice nice thing to to keep. Uh, in, in, yeah. on, on hand. No, I think you, you, you're you right there. I mean, it's also nice to to look at this technical motivation based on a live a live trade idea that's actually happening at the moment, you know, so it's it's a, it's a way for you to, to build your educational base and, you know, map it against the live example, which is great. No, I mean, let's let's chat about, I mean, this is a basic buy idea that we would have sent out. Let's have a look at, you know, some of the, in a more advanced strategy that we'll send out to clients. Let's talk about a, a pair trade. Do you want sure. to walk us through that? Sure, sure, 100%. Okay, so recently we have popped out a few pair trades. Um, I have found that clients did not quite grasp the the concept early on there and I was receiving a lot of emails and phone calls with regard to it you know just with queries on how it works how how we get to the pricing etc so I thought this would be a nice platform just to to put it out there and, and maybe add on um, to your to your trading strategies moving forward so 
A pair trade is, is known as a market neutral trading strategy. It's best used in an uncertain environment like we currently have with, with lots of volatility. Um, what, what we're doing there is uh, basically we've got a buy side trade and we've got a sell side trade and we are running those concurrently with equal exposures on each leg. In a, a trade that I'm going to run to you, run you through now in a few slides time um, is, is what we, we, were we were buyers of bid corporation and we were sellers of risk. So how we would do this is we would be buying, say, for instance, or example, a hundred thousand rands worth of Bidcorp. At the same time, we would then sell a hundred thousand rands worth of CFR, and we're holding a long position against a short position. You might be thinking, you know, how does that work? How 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 do you make profit off that type of scenario? What we are looking for here is a relative outperformance of the buy side stock over the sell side stock. So. You know, if the market's running up, your bid corporation long position is going to be making a profit. And what we're expecting is for CFR, even if it is moving higher, to be moving higher at a slower pace than what bid corporation is doing. And if corporate, if the market is moving lower, we would expect bid corp to be moving lower at a slower pace than what Richmond would be moving at. And both of those scenarios would produce a profitable trade. So. Where a lot of the confusion has come in with these trades is that they are shown as ratios. They are priced as ratios, stop losses, profit targets, everything is shown as a ratio. Even the graph is, is, is displayed um, by using the ratios between the two stocks. How we arrive at those ratios or at the, the, the relevant ratios is you're taking the price of your buy side stock, so the price of Bidcorp, and you divide that by the price of your sell side stock. Richmond, and that would give you your relevant ratio. So from there, um, you, you'd obviously be able to to note, and I will show you on the next slide and how the directional movements take place from there. Um, but just to quickly note is that if you are looking to do a pair trade, you will need to have access to a derivative account, whether it's a single stock future account or a CFD account, because that that is where you're going to be able to house and hold the short side position of the trade. Yeah. Nulls, just like, I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, um, the ratios, I mean, just just to break it down even further, I mean, I don't, you, you don't want to scare anyone off by saying ratios and, you know, it's very mathematical. It's, it's quite simple. You know, in this, in this, in this idea, you know, Bitcorp was trading around 300 bucks. Richmond was trading around 177 Rand um, at this, at this stage. It's basically 300 divided by 177 which gives you our entry ratio of 1.7. I mean, it's 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 quite straightforward. And what it what traders will do is we'll actually have a you know on our side. I mean, you don't have to do this. We've done all the the heavy lifting, as Noel say, says it. Um, on on our side, we will have you know we'll drag the the um, the Bitcoin price into an Excel, and we'll have the um, the Richmond price. You know, we'll have them trading live. We'll just drag it onto an Excel. And you just divide the two, and that's how we're watching. We're, we're tracking the ratio at the, at you know, as it's moving along. And you know, we've got an entry price where we'll buy the buy the pair. And it's it's important that you do it at the same time. You don't want to have be naked on one side, meaning you know you haven't put you haven't sold your Richmonts or you haven't bought your your Bitcorp. So when you decide to put the pair trade on, you do it at the same time. You're buying your Bitcorps and you're selling your your Richmonts. Um, I think Knowles is going to, you know, I think it's Knowles. Walk us through the the Bitcorp Richmond idea. I think that will be, you know, put put things into perspective for everyone. Absolutely, and that, that's a very important point. There is, if you are doing a pair trade, don't leave the one side of the trade open. Is you, you would you would want to go and fill the other side, so you've got that protection. Should it move lower, or you've got the exposure, should you be moving higher, of course. So, as mentioned, this was our, our pair trade idea on Bitcorp Richmond, um, buying Bitcorp, selling Richmond. On the right hand side of the chart again this is the first page of our trade idea you're going to see our profit target stop loss points uh, as well as the the entry range underneath that in the screen a uh, small green block is the the time that we are looking to take profits or exit the trade um the the bottom bottom block there is the MACD indicator. You see that that has converged, crossed higher, given a buy signal from an oversold point. We've got the histogram there that is slowing down, showing that the pace of art performance of Richmond versus Bidcorp is slowing. Now, the actual chart is neither Bidcorp nor Richmond alone. It's both of them together. Again, it's taking that Bidcorp share price divided by the Richmond share price, and we're plotting that on the graph on a daily basis. Um, in the underneath that trend line, that supporting trend line, uh, we do have a little note there about the price direction. What we're saying there is if you 
buying Bitcorp, you're selling Richmond, and the graph moves higher, that is confirming or that is showing that Bitcorp is outperforming Richmond at on those days. Obviously, the graph slanting lower means that Richmond is outperforming Bitcorp over that period. And you can see that on this graph, Richmond was outperforming Bitcorp over a three to almost four month period. And we expected a bit of a reversion in that process, in, in that performance, and, and for Bitcorp to now start playing a bit of catch up in terms of performance, hence the, the, the trade idea and, and obviously us releasing yeah. this. Nels, and I mean, I think it's important to note that, I mean, you use the exact same technical analysis principles as you would on an, on an individual stock as you would in the ratio, you know, so using your same analysis, your same indicators as you would in an individual stock on the ratio. And I mean, it both, I mean, it, it works out. Let's just have a look, I mean, at this, at the strategy, Nels. Sure. Again, the second page of our note, we always going to have that strategy placed in writing, what is the entry range, the profit target, the stop loss, the time exit, risk to reward ratio, and in this point we had dividends. There was neither any dividends applicable nor company announcements applicable there. Um, but what I want to draw your attention to on this slide is look at the pricing on the entry range, profit target, stop loss. You'll see there that this is neither Bitcorp nor Richmond share price. These are the ratios. And this is obviously, like I said, where a lot of the confusion did come in. Um, you know, 1.6765 is, is our bottom end of our entry range. The 1.9 is our profit target. And class just got a little bit confused on how, how we came about on, in arriving at these figures. And as Wes mentioned, you know, it's the same technical analysis. We're forecasting the profit projection of 1.9 um, off of a normal graph uh, of the two stocks, obviously, place together um, but that's just you know obviously as we said that is going to be the ratio and how we price these type of trades. Well then I think I mean you this was actually quite a nice trade as well I'm glad that you've selected all the the nice trades to to show everyone but I'll, I'll talk about some of our losing trades which we do which we do I mean they do happen but just I mean in this case <clears throat> it actually worked out perfectly because I mean Bitcorp, you know, pushed up very nicely from that 300 level to 320, which is the direction we wanted it at. And, you know, Richmond actually lost a little bit. I mean, that's in an ideal world, that's exactly what you want to happen. You want Bitcorp to pick up and you want Richmond to fall. And I think Richmond fell to about 170 bucks and um, Bitcorp picked up to just over 320 at this stage. And, you know, we reached our profit target there and it was actually a very nice trade, um, you know, so well done there. Um, just, you know, through through some of the technical motivation, yeah, Nels? Okay, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, again, as I said, each one of our trade ideas is going to have this trade motivation on the last page. Yeah, we again touching on a few of the technicals we've identified within the, the graphs. Um, we've mentioned them in the write-up. We've also gone into a little bit of detail with regards to pair trades, how they work, how the pricing is arrived at, just to try simplify it for our clients and, and get that understanding on what we are looking for here. Obviously, the outperformance of your buy versus your sell. Um, again, in the bottom block there, uh, what we've pointed to here is is correlation between the two stocks uh, in the past um, again very nice very nice little snippet there to add to that toolkit of technical indicators or, or themes um, what we're showing you here is the the obviously the the correlation between Bitcorp and CFR CFR being that light line moving high at a uh, at a fast pretty much sideways so what we were expecting there is for either Richmond to roll over a little bit and see that light line start heading back towards the dark line or the dark line with Bitcorp uh, climbing at a faster pace and, and you know, going up to meet Richmond. In both of those cases, both of them actually did happen. And obviously it was profitable on either side of, of the trade, which was which was very nice. OK, thanks. Thanks for that, Knowles. Um, You know, as, as I mentioned, as I rudely interrupted Knowles about um, only displaying, you know, uh, winning trades. Um, I'm going to walk us through our performance. Um, we all actually, you know, we we do we do have some losing trades. We don't call everything right. And I mean, just just a quick um, roundup of our of our performance. We've got, um, you know, we started doing um, releasing trades um, late in May. Um, you know, so we've been releasing trades for probably, you know, just under a month now. 
and we've released 14 to date. So it shows, you know, we we are quite consistent, um, you know, and we will keep these these coming. Um, we've had um, some some actually some great performance. Um, obviously, you know, I mean, this we've we've returned in absolute terms just under, you know, 36 percent, just under. Um, but I mean, obviously, we understand no one is taking all our trade ideas. Um, you know, putting all their money into all our trade ideas. You know, that's when you would have generated 36%. What what we have done on our side is, you know, we've we we've built a portfolio, and obviously everyone you know limits their exposure to each trade. And you know, if you build a portfolio yourself, um, you know, our portfolio generated just under six percent, which is which is more realistic, and which is actually a, a very good return over you know two just under a two month period. You know, on this analysis, you'll show you we've we've still got some open ideas, which I'll walk you through shortly, and then we've got closed ideas, which um, you know Nolan walked us through the Sabanya and the the Bidcorp uh, Richmond pair. Um, you know, we were stopped out on Woolies and um, Absa, um, but just I mean, this is a nice gives you a nice idea, and it shows you. I mean, we've actually been doing you know we've been doing something right um, to, to to you know to consistently call our ideas, and I mean some of them do are exited via a time stop. And I mean, it, it shows you that that this time stop does pay off and we move on to the next idea because, you know, the next idea might have better returns for you. I just want to, as I mentioned, um, you know, I just want to take you through some of our ideas that we've still got open. Um, Netcare is one of the ideas that that didn't get stopped out on, on Monday. I mean, Monday and Friday, we had a very volatile session. Anglo Gold is actually still going as well. Um, we've got a discovery and Sunlum pair still still trading. Obviously, with Sunlum pulling back quite a bit, it's helped us pair out quite nicely. And I do think we actually got stopped out on um, on Monday on Coronation. You know, just with those resource stocks pulling back again for a, for a, for a second consecutive day, we did we did close out there on those Coronations. Um, you know, I think it's important, as I mentioned earlier, to just show you how we distribute our ideas. So this is what a, what an email will look like when you receive it in your inbox. We'll have a graph in the body, and we do like to attach a PDF document. So I mean, it's it's a it's 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 you know it's usual it's a usual format for most for most um, for most users, and I mean that will be the three page um, documents that Nolan has walked you through. We also save it on our website um, under our under your dashboard as well as in the research center. But I think it's important that you let us know how how you'd like to receive these ideas. You know, would it be you know something through the NetBank app? Would that be you know, useful to you. You know, I think we just need to work on ways of, you know, getting this out to you uh, more efficiently or what ways you like to view it in. So, I mean, pop it in the chat box. I mean, we, we'd love to hear some feedback from you. Um, I just want to actually run you through our research center, as I, as I mentioned um, earlier. I mean, this is great functionality, which which everyone should be using. I mean, it's it's free for you to use. It's, it's on our website. You know, once you click on our research center, You'll see we've got um, you can filter via, you know, all research um, or just investment fundamental research. That's Carl's uh, baby, um, you know, where you can reach all your long term fundamental research, which is an independent team, which is quite nice. And I mean, then Nolan and uh, well, the derivatives short term trade ideas are all saved under um, the trade ideas. And I mean, this is a just a quick snapshot of what it looks like. And I mean, as you click on the on the coronation icon, it will pull up the three page um, PDF for you. Um, just looking at, um, at, at at our long term fundamental research, got the same setup. You'll just click on um, investment research and it will have the, the latest results that our investment team has published, all the heads ups that they've published. And as you click on it, it'll bring, bring up um, a you know a three or four page PDF for you. Again, this is all fundamental based research and, it, and it's good to have a read through. Um, I just want to show you what it looks like if you, you know, if you click on on the various research notes. I mean, Nolan's walked you through our, our technical note um, just to have a look at what the fundamental research looks like. So this is a this is a heads up on Netcare, which which our which our research team released. They also had they also called it as a buy, and it's based on their you know the interim results that they that they released. And you know sometimes these two worlds do collide. You know we do have our our, our long-term research team, you know, sending out buy recommendations on certain stocks. 
um, you know, for this, for, for this, in this case, you know, Netcare, and we also released a short-term trading buy notes on Netcare. So, I mean, that's, you know, in an ideal world, you, you're getting those two worlds colliding, and, and you know, long-term, the long-term guys are are sending out buy recommendations, and you know, on our short-term trading ideas, we also having buy ideas. But it's it's important that there are two separate, um, you know, teams and they're independent of each other. Um, just want to run you through, you know. I chatted about how we start our trading day. I think it's important that, you know, we give you the same tools um, to start your trading day. So if you click on market tools on our website, um, you know, Nolan walked you through some some basic technical setups that you can use. I mean, there's, there's a charting package free for you to use on our website. So, you know, jump on board, you know, play around with it. Um, it's, it's by no means the most advanced technical platform you're going to get, but it is available for free on our website. And then, you know, just, just where you'd start your day. I think this is a great, great screen to use. Again, under market tools, I've just walked you through our charts. We've got a business calendar where we will display, you know, upcoming earnings releases or AGMs. Um, I like to keep an, an eye on the dividend watch. You know, it will display, it will display which, which stocks are paying dividends. Um, when the last date to trade is, that's when it includes the dividend and as well as the dividend amount because you know sometimes you do you do think geez i've got such a bargain on let's say you know lewis this morning meanwhile it's it's actually paid a two end div <laughs> so it's it's actually you know it's not such a bargain if you if you look a little bit closer so you know it's, it's a good idea to just keep an eye on which stocks are paying dividends and they're generally trading x dividend on a wednesday um, we do also rank our shares for you we've got a ranking table uh, via pe ratio um, and then we we also display what what directors are doing in in the listed companies. It's nice to see what the what the big what the big boys are doing, the big dogs are doing. And you know just on your dashboard, this is central to everything on on the platform. So you know you can see your accounts, your cash available, your positions. And then if you just scroll down, we've got a nice section where you can read um, research notes and and our trade ideas, as well as a, a market overview. And I think this is quite great. I mean. As we start our day looking at, you know, at the various exchange rates um, and your uh, and your precious metals, I mean, we display these for you as well, which is which is great. So, I mean, it's going to take you, you know, two minutes to go through these these various screens to just you know just start your day and just have a feeling, you know, are we going to open up positively or are we going to open up um, negatively on the day? That's a, it's a good way to to start your day. Um, just upcoming attractions. Um, we are we are going to release a educational video series. Um, you know, just in line with today's webinar. I think you know, just keep an eye out for um, our technical analysis portion of this. I mean, these are these are going to be saved on the website and free for you to use whenever you want. If you've got any questions for for the derivatives team, you, you're more than welcome to email us at derivatives trading at Nedbank Private Wealth. And we will actually have a um, additional contact for you on on screen as we end our webinar, where you can always send any queries. Um, you know, if you, if you want to chat to someone, we've got branches all around the country. You know, give give someone in the branch a call, and I mean they'll definitely assist you. And yeah, I mean I've just shown you a few functionalities on our on our website. It's it's world class. Jump on it at onlinesharetrading.nedbank.co.za. And yeah, I mean, thanks, thanks for your time. Sorry if we've if we've run over schedule, but I think the the interesting part part that we've all been waiting for is um, Carl's questions. So, Carl, um, over to you. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. That was certainly a very interesting session. We have had some questions that have come through in the run up to today's webinar. Um, perhaps, Wes, if I can start with you, since uh, you're already in the hot seat. Um, as as active traders on the desk, I mean, how have you guys seen markets trading in the first six months of this year? Yeah, Carl, thanks for that. Um, you know, I've, I've actually enjoyed the um, let's say the volatility that we've had over these first six months of the year. Um, you know, remember this has been manageable volatility that we've seen this six months. I mean, it hasn't been extreme volatility which we saw last year, which is actually which which is nice for a trading environment. You know, so we've seen these well done defined um, trading ranges 
Um, you know, we've seen, you know, sectors that are that are performing and we've seen great rotation, you know, between between various sectors and, you know, you're picking up, you know, which flavor of the week uh, is, is is working out better. And I mean, you're seeing a clear switch between them, you know, just as an example, you know, we're seeing, let's say, we're seeing selling in, in resources and buying in banks, you know, and, and the stocks within those sectors are performing nicely. And there's, as I mentioned, there's well-defined ranges in these stocks, and it's it's a great way for a trader to take advantage, you know, and and these these margins in these in these ranges aren't aren't you know it's not one or two percent you know it's a, it's quite a thick margin that that traders can look for. I mean these ranges are between seven and twelve percent, which is great for for someone like like me that's that's actively trading to take advantage of these ranges. Yeah, so I mean I've I've actually enjoyed this this the, the past six months of this year. Yeah, thanks. Wes. I mean, look, you guys are obviously very experienced traders. I mean, what are some of the more advanced technical analysis tools um, that you're currently using in your trade ideas that have been working that clients can perhaps look up um, in their own time? Yeah, Carl, um, yeah, thanks. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, we've just touched on some of the, the basic topics today. Um, you know, I'll actually draw on a conversation that I had with, we actually use an external um, technical analysis uh, guru, as I like to call him. And, you know, I mean, we, we were chatting and, you know, he says, you know, whereas you guys are good at picking up these, um, you know, these ranges and themes that are in play, um, you know, and these rotations out of these um, stocks and, you know, into different sectors. And, you know, I said, geez, you know, what can you do for us on this front? He says, no, well, he produced us a great scatter plot diagram, which is awesome. You know, it's, he's got all the sectors. Well, he's got it via sector or um, as, a, as a stock. And then he breaks it up onto this the scatter plot for us, which was actually great, you know. And I said, "Geez, these are this is brilliant. Um, have you developed this?" And he said, "No, no, this is this is quite a it's quite a well known, you know, technical uh, analysis tool, which is called um, just got to remember it's quite a tongue twister. It's, I know the the abbreviation is RRG, so it's um, uh, relative rotation graphs. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. so so relative rotation graphs. I think that's a great read for you know for someone looking to for a more advanced um, technical analysis tool, and it's it's actually quite relevant. You know, as I said, you know, the last six months, it's been a great tool to use, and it you know it, it lines up with with our ideas. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Wes. Uh, Noel, I don't want you to feel too left out, so perhaps you can help us uh, with the next few questions. Um, trading and investing are two different species of the same animal. Um, what insights can you offer us on the difference between the two? Sure. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, trading, you're looking a lot uh, in terms of shorter time frame. Obviously, um, as I mentioned earlier, our trade ideas are anywhere between three and four weeks in, in expected time frame. Um, you, you don't want to be holding on to a trade for too long. Uh, obviously, investments, you, one year, three year, five year, that depends on your outlook or expectations or or what, what you're looking for from, from your investments. Um, in terms of, you know, retail traders and and how they fare in the trading market if i could just touch on that quickly um now obviously there's there's a lot of speculation about how hard it is etc because you get there there's a lot of risk in the markets um but what I'd say is, you know, if you do start building that technical indicator set, um, you're managing your risks. And the, the best way to manage those risks is to keep your, your position sizing in check. Um, you don't want to be forced out of a trade just because you're overexposed. Um, you know, have your stop loss in mind and respect that stop loss. You know, some some guys prefer stop lossing on an intraday basis. We we prefer stop lossing on an end of day basis. That's up to you what type of position you're holding. Um, and then diversify your trades. Just, you know, just like your equity positions is, is take a couple of positions in different sectors uh, just to diversify that exposure, and not be too overexposed in one area. So, you know, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, the major, major difference that I would say is going to be your timing and obviously uh, your your leverage and your gearing which which is where you would need to then manage the risk yeah thanks uh, very much for answering those questions uh, guys so just uh, i guess in closing we trust that you found the session to be very useful and ben and beneficial to you uh, thank you to both uh, wesley and nolan for your time today uh, should you wish to discuss any of the aspects covered in more detail and um, we invite you to reach out to you uh, nolan or wesley or, or any of the relationship managers um, you should be receiving an email in the next few days with a link to the recording of the conversation starter session uh, in case you'd like to watch it again or perhaps just share it with friends or family. Uh, again, lastly, your views certainly matter to us. Please help us to improve our future webinars 
by giving us your feedback uh, in, a brief, in a brief survey that you'll be receiving in the next few days. Thank you, go well and stay safe.